Hello, John Bloodworth Gentleman Crafter here with a very quick and simple Mother's Day card for you. It's made up of very simple layers together with some easy to assemble floral embellishments. So let's take a look at how to do this. Okay, let's take a little look at how this file is structured in Canvas Workspace. So you are going to need Canvas Workspace for PC, which is the copy that you download and install on your Windows or Mac computer. It looks slightly different to the online version, as you can see, but we need it because we're using layers. So what you would do is go to File, Open, navigate to wherever you've downloaded this project file to, select it, and then choose Open, and it will open in the workspace. Now, all of the layers for the project are here together. So if I open the Layers tab, you'll see we've got everything all in the one mat. But what we can't do is transfer this all at once and um, expect the machine to differentiate between them. We have to tell it what to cut at what stage. So we're going to start by collapsing all of these layers, just to make it a bit tidier. Then we're going to hide and lock the top three layers. So we're just left with the card. Now we can transfer this over to our machine and cut it using File, Export Transfer FCM File. You'll get this warning that the hidden and locked layers won't be transferred. That's fine, that's exactly what we want. So we click OK. Then we would choose the option that we usually use to transfer files to our machine. So if you use a USB stick, you'll choose this one and then save it to wherever your USB stick is stored. If you use Wi-Fi transfer, you'll choose this option. And if you use a cabled connection between your computer and your machine, you'll use this option here. So you'd then transfer it over to your machine and cut this from the cardstock that you chose for the card. When that's finished, you'll then come back over here to Canvas Workspace, hide the card layer, show the mats layer and unlock it, leave the other three locked, and then again go through this process of transferring over to, can uh, over to your machine. You then cut this from the cardstock that you chose for the mats. You'll then repeat this process for the background and for the decoration. And once you've got all of that together, I'll join you over at the work table. Right, here are the parts all cut out and ready to go. So I'm going to start by just gluing the mother's sentiment to the decorative mat. Just so that, that has chance to dry before I need it in a minute. I'm using a book binding glue for this because it means I need very, very little and also it's quick drying and quick grabbing and it's low moisture content so it doesn't wrinkle your paper and card. I'm just applying very fine lines wherever there's a thick space or thick enough space for me to put it. It doesn't need to be a complete coating, it's just enough to hold that sentiment in place. And I'm using those reverse action tweezers from Brother to help me position this and be like a third hand so that I don't go and get glue all over my fingers and plonk it all over the card. Take your time with this and make sure it's neatly positioned as you've got to make a good impression with this card. Okay, that's that sentiment in place. I'm going to pop that over to one side to dry. And then I'm going to start by putting on the solid mat. So this is going to sit just below the score line with an equal border around it. And I'm just applying that same book binding glue to the back quite sparingly, just all over. Again, just enough to grab, not enough to saturate. In fact, when it comes to card making, less is definitely the way to go with glue because that helps us A, economize, and B, um, not wrinkle our paper and card and get that professional look. So that's the solid mat in place. Next up, 
I'm going to stick down what we've called in this project the background. So this is a nice decorative paper that's going to be seen across the whole surface of the card. Uh, so you want it to be something bold and bright and vibrant perhaps. I'm sure you've got plenty of uh, card and paper in your stash that you could use for this. If it's anything like my craft room, probably a little bit too much. Okay, down we go with that, smooth it down. Next, we're going to bring back in that decorative top section. And again, I'm using the tweezers because I've got a lot of fine detail here and I want to apply glue in lots of fiddly places. So it's just again a way of holding things in place whilst I apply the glue. Same glue here, book binding glue. And again, just applying it in places where I think it's going to be needed. I probably have done a bit too much, but you can never be too careful. As you can see on the um, fine detail of the letters, it's just a tiny little dot and then all the way around the border with a very, very fine line. If you need to, just manoeuvre the card so that you've got access freely with both hands. And then again, take your time placing this down and gently press it so that you don't necessarily push the glue out, you're just making it come into contact with the um, decorative background. So that's the core of the card done. Next up, we need our decorations. So I'm just using a bit of foam here and a hand embossing tool to shape the petals. So I'm going to rub them over on the reverse of that paper just around the edges of each petal. If you're posting, you could always leave them flat. I, however, prefer to have the shaped flowers as they give a bit more interest and dimension to the project. When you turn it over, just give the middle a little press as well. Then for the center of the flower, again, just um, pressing around in circles to shape it, this time from the front. Then again, using that same glue, we're going to apply a tiny little dot to the center of the flower and layer these up in pairs of the same size. So you will have enough from your cutouts to make one large flower and two smaller flowers. I've already skipped ahead and gone ahead and created the smaller flowers already. I just wanted to show you the process on this big flower as well. If you have them and if you want to, you can also add some um, decorative gems in there or flat back gems. Once you've got everything done and let it dry, then just apply a little glue to the back of the flower. The large one is going to go top right where that spiral is. And you can see how those tweezers are perfect for giving me a third hand. <laughs> and then we've got one small one that will go next to the large flower. And then our final small flower will go just below the O in the word mothers. Once that's all done, put the cap back on your glue and then just fold the card along the score line, gently pushing it over and then pressing down. 
And here's an example using those decorative gems in the centre of the flowers. And there's your card complete. Thanks for watching and I hope you have fun making your own.